Yo, yo, what up, y'all? Tight Shirt Terry Warfield back for another video. Hey, I hope you're having a great day so far. Remember to be thankful for your life today because you ain't have to have that. Hey, they're going to have smoke detector that we know got to be present in every single video. But in this video today, we are going to do another Final Cut Pro Tips and Tricks tutorial. Now, my last one, a lot of y'all found very, very helpful. There were 10 tips and tricks in that one, too. So I'll link that right up there. And this is part two, and I'm sure there'll be a part three, part four, blah, blah, blah. A few things real quick. I don't profess to be some type of editing guru in Final Cut Pro. I do edit full time. And what ends up happening is as I learn new tips and also talk to other people who I might share something with them and they're like, oh, well, I didn't know that. I write these things down to bring them to y'all to share. So they're not in any specific order. They're not following any specific rubric. I hope these tips are helpful for you. Let's get into it. Tip number one and two are for my slow-mo freaks. And trust me, I am one of them slow-mo freaks. 120 frames per second, everything. I know y'all hate it, but I don't. So anyway, Anyways, the first thing a lot of people have problems with is trying to figure out, yo, how much can I slow a clip down without it looking like shit? And Final Cut Pro actually has some built-in tips and tricks to help you out with that. So one thing I want to tell you is the outcome of this is going to be hugely dictated by the frame rate of the timeline you're editing on. So here's a clip, right? So this is a 23.98 timeline that I'm editing on, and this is a clip that's filmed in 120 frames per second. I want to slow this clip down. If I was new, I'm not sure how much I can slow this clip down. So let's just slow it down to something like, I don't know, 16%. Let's press play. You see how it's not really smooth and it's pretty choppy? Well, that's because there's not enough frames there to slow it down and stretch it out over this 23.98 timeline that I'm editing on so it plays back choppy. So if I were to reset this, and instead go to automatic speed, which is right here, Final Cut Pro knows, based off the math, right, it's simple math, the frame rate is 23.98, the clip is 120 frames per second. Final Cut Pro says, bro, I can slow this down to 20% and play it back smoothly for you without skipping frames, and there you go. So, the reason why this is helpful is a lot of times you don't notice stuff just starting out and you know, as you go along, you'll figure out what you know what you can do and what you can't do. But before you understand that, this is a great tool for Final Cut Pro to help you slow footage down if you don't know how much that it can be slow. Now, I told you that it's timeline dependent. So here's an example. If I'm dropping a 60 frames per second clip on a 23.98 frames per second timeline, I can only slow that down 40% without it looking choppy. Conversely, if I were to take a 30 frames per second timeline and drop a 60 frames per second clip on there, then I could slow that down 50%. So the outcome is dictated by your editing timeline and also the frame rate that you film in. Now, there's another tool. This is tip number two called Optical Flow. And a lot of editors have this in it. A lot of y'all have been using Final Cut Pro for a long time and don't know about this. So you know how I initially slowed this down? Let's just do it again. Oh, we'll go 17% because it's already right there, right? We see that it's choppy. So there's a feature called Optical Flow that will help you smooth out problems like this. So you stretched it out. You stretched the clip out too much, and now it plays back choppy. Well, what Optical Flow does is it takes each individual frame, and it looks to the left, and it looks to the right. And it says, hey, bruh, I need a little bit of information from you. And hey, bruh. I need a little bit of information from you. And it takes those and it makes a new frame. So all of those holes in the, the, the clip that there wasn't enough data, not enough frames in your clip to stretch out and it play back smoothly, Final Cut Pro will fill those holes so that it can play back smoothly. Now, there's a lot of processing power that goes behind this, so you will need to give it a second to render. But if we go back into our retime menu and go down to video quality and optical flow, what ends up happening, once it's done rendering, instead of it playing back choppy, it plays back butter freaking smooth. Now, optical flow works the majority of the time. You have to give enough data for Final Cut Pro to work with. So don't expect a, a clip that looks trash, that's underexposed and grainy for it to work that well. So it doesn't work all the time, but it does work most of the time and the results are typically fantastic. I have used optical flow so many times over the last decade of editing. Tip number three. So do you know that you can use markers here? Now, Terry, what are you talking about, right? Let's take the same clip 
Now let's put a marker here. Now markers are useful because sometimes you may need to organize a clip for multi-cam or something like that and maybe the audio won't sync correctly so you may need to use markers to tell Final Cut Pro where to start synchronizing from. There's a bunch of different uses for markers but the way you do a marker is you scroll to wherever on the clip you want to put this marker and you press M and that drops a marker right there. But what's super dope about this is if you double click on this marker now you can add text to it. So let's just add I am going to add text, okay? This is very helpful because if you're just rushing through your initial edit and you got something that comes to mind like, oh, I would love to use this B-roll shot right here, you can put a note to yourself right here to use the B-roll shot. Or if you use like frame.io, you can place markers for the other person who's editing it to see. There's just, it's so much use behind markers, but I didn't know that you could put notes on markers until I just happened to double click on it one day and put it in there. And this is just from the surface. You could do way more stuff to markers, but that's tip number three. Tip number four, I wanna show y'all something. So a big mistake that I made when I started using Final Cut Pro is I would just grab clips and sounds and I would just bring them in from everywhere. And then when I go to my viewer window where all of my clips are, it would just be a mess, right? So one thing y'all need to start doing is before you go and import media, make a folder with all of your assets in it. I'm about to show y'all what I'm talking about. So right here, I have a folder called A74. And in this folder, I have a video clip that says A-Roll, that's me talking. I have my B-roll clips of my camera, which if I play back some of those, you'll see. And I have my general B-roll, so these are like B-roll clips of stuff that I actually shot. So I have all of this stuff organized. You could put sounds and stuff like that in here, but I'm gonna show you the power of this. So let's go to Final Cut Pro, and we are gonna import media. I'm gonna go to my desktop, and I'm gonna choose the entire folder that says A74. Don't open it up. I'm just gonna choose it, and I'm gonna hit Import Selected. Boom. Okay. So now you see all of my files in here, right? If I hit this character, this drop down, boom, Final Cut Pro has already assigned each of these folders to a freaking keyword. So look, if I just want to get to my B-roll of camera shots, boom, those are right there. If I just want to get my video clips that I film, boom, those are right there. If I just want to get my A-roll, this is already, I just put this in here just so y'all can see an example, but boom. So it makes it super easy to organize and see footage in your viewer window without having to go digging all over the place to get your video clips. Now, we could take this a step further. Sometimes I do this, sometimes I don't, but some people do find it helpful. So let's just say I know I'm scrubbing through this clip right here and I really like the way this looks. If I select the piece and then hit F, there's a green line that you can see on top of it. And I'm gonna do the same thing. Oh, I like this part right here. So I'm gonna select this part and I'm gonna hit F. So anytime you hit F on a clip, this assigns it to favorites. And this is super helpful if you don't want to drop clips down on the timeline first and scrub them. You could do it right here from the viewer window. And here's the power of it. And you could take this a couple layers deep too, but I'm not going to go into that. But there is a built-in feature right here. If you click on all clips and you go to favorites, now it only shows me my favorite clips that I selected. So it's super easy to just grab these and drop them both down on the timeline. So I didn't have to put the whole clip on my timeline. I only did it by favorites. And again, there's even more functionality that you could do on top of that, but I just wanted to show you all that real quick. All right, for anybody who has to edit like long segments, you know the pain of just sitting there, listening to the footage, making your cuts and stuff like that. A lot of people don't know that you can use the shortcut L on your keyboard to make your playback go way faster. So if I just press the space bar to start playing this, it plays back regular speed. But you know what? That's not fast enough for me when I know I need to go through and cut this up real quick. So if I play it again and then press space, now it plays back faster. If I press L again, it plays back even faster. Now, Final Cut Pro is smart enough to know that if you stopped it, that's because you probably need to make a change or something like that. So once you stop it and restart it, it plays back regular speed. But this is super helpful if you need to edit long freaking timelines. The next tip I wanna show you since we right here is how you can break down a multi-cam clip. And I have told so many people this and so many people did not notice. So maybe you don't know what a multi-cam clip is. If I got like three different camera angles and let's just say a screen recorded, Final Cut has a way where it can automatically put these together for you and let you switch back and forth while the video plays, which is, is super clutch, right? But one thing I didn't know is once it creates the multicam, I used to think that those files were now inaccessible, so you couldn't edit them, wrong. So once you have a multicam clip, if you go on your timeline and you double click on it, look at that, boom. 
I broke the multicam clip open. Now, let me tell you how powerful this is. Maybe you have a talk ahead segment where you might have synchronized audio. So you had an external source and you wanted to pair it with the A-roll segment and use that particular audio. Well, I've had it where I forgot to turn off one of those layers and then the sound got all messed up. So you can actually go in here and double click on that clip and then break it down even further. And here's the beauty of it. Once you go underneath the main layer, any changes that you make to any of these clips is global. So let's just say for this right here, I went in here and I wanted to adjust it, right? After I already created my multicam clip, I forgot to color grade it, right? I could go underneath that and make any changes and those will carry over to the top layer. And this is so freaking clutch because there's been so many times where I used to go through editing and I would have to, after my edit was done and I picked out my multicam clips, I noticed, hmm, the third camera angle is a little bit underexposed. You know what I used to do? I used to sit there, go through every single clip on my primary timeline and adjust it. Well, had I known what I know now, I could have just went underneath and made one small change and it would have took effect to every single clip that utilized that particular video. So that was game changing to me. Have you ever put a clip on your timeline and then you played it back? You like, oh man, you know what? I kind of need to move it up a little bit. I cut the wrong part. Well, there's a feature in here and Premiere users notice that slip, but Final Cut Pro users, we don't have that type of language. So anyways, once you are done making your chops on your primary magnetic timeline, if you click on a clip and you hold down T, you can scroll that clip back and forth. Look at this. So you can literally scroll this clip back and forth without messing up this clip's position in the timeline. So if you are making fancy cuts and B-roll cuts and stuff like that, and you realize, man, I should have cut that clip three frames shorter than what I did, boom. That's all you got to do. Hold down T and then scroll it back and forth. And this works for pretty much anything, but that's something else that I just learned not too long ago. Super clutch. The next thing I want to show y'all is how to save your custom presets. So if you like me, you do YouTube videos a lot in the same, you know, area, it looks the same, the audio is always the same. In this case, I always color grade it the same and I always use the same LUT and the same audio treatment. So what I did is I created presets. So that way, every single time that I drop a new video into my timeline shot down here in the basement, I don't have to go through and dig through my effects individually and add on this and add on that. So I'm gonna show you how to do it, right? So. As you see up here, I have MLUT, which is uh, Motion VFX LUT Chooser. I have my color wheels, and I know that I like to use this every single video, like I said. So if you go to Save Effects Presets, I've already done it, but I'm gonna do it again just for the sake of the video. You get a pop-up, and in this pop-up, you can name this whatever you want. So let's just say Terry's Studio. And again, I've already done this, I'm just doing it again just so you can see it. It's Terry's Studio, right? Okay, now down here, I can pick which attributes or attributes, however you want to say it, that I want to save to this preset. In this case, it's just the MLUT and the color wheel, so I hit save. Then once I go to my effects browser, guess what's in here? It's under Terry Studio, and I forgot to mention that I did pick looks for the drop down. You can put it wherever you want to. But now all I gotta do is go to Terry Studio and drag that on top of my clip, and it's got all of my effects on there. Same thing for audio, if I go to uh, audio down here, I have a preset called My Voice. So if I drop this on here and then I go to my audio tab, it's probably on here two times now, but it's got my channel EQ, my compressor, my limiter, all of that stuff is already on it. And my last and final tip, I know you don't want the video to be over, but y'all gotta remember that in your playback window, a few things I wanna point out. So if we go up here to our view tab or carrot, whatever you wanna call it, we click on that, we get this whole drop down. Few things I wanna bring attention to. Number one, if you are having problems with playback, try some of these options. Try better performance instead of better quality. Better quality plays it back at full resolution. Sometimes that's hard on a computer. Better performance plays it back at a lower resolution, but not super low, but it makes it a lot easier for this footage that you edited to be played back if your machine struggles. If we move down here, if you created optimized or transcoded media, you could tell this to only play back the optimized or original media. If you use proxy, you can set this to only use proxy media during playback. And lastly, the other thing I wanna show down here is range check. Now, a lot of you have cameras, right? You know what zebras are. 
So zebras are basically your camera's way of telling you that something's overexposed by putting zebra-like stripes on it. Well, under range tech, you could turn on all and anything that's overexposed, look at this. You see these like dancing zebra effects? That's showing me that this right here is overexposed. So a super helpful tool that's built into Final Cut Pro. So that's 10 tips, 10 tips that your boy just gave y'all that I hope are helpful. If you found this video helpful, please don't forget to subscribe, share it, comment, all that stuff. I would really appreciate y'all. And also there is the super thanks thing now. So if you want to buy me some coffee or whatever feel free you ain't got to but it's there so again part one is up here till next time i'm out of here much love y'all piece of chicken grease tyson Terry warfield look at this, this is perpetual i'm out of here peace <laughs> see y'all later